Hello, my name's Jeff. I'm one of the engineers at Gitpod. And what I want to show you is how Gitpod builds Gitpod with Gitpod. I want to show you what it's like as an average day as an engineer here at Gitpod. So a little bit about me. I am slowly traveling around Australia in a van. Uh, this is my office last month. And I'm literally, as long as I've got an internet connection, I can do my do my job in software development. And actually, it's actually, I find it um, doing a cloud-based development gives me a lot more performance than I would normally have on my local computer because at times I'm doing developments on, on an iPad or a Chromebook. Or right now, I'm currently using a Mac M1. So anyway, this talk is uh, how Gitpod builds Gitpod with Gitpod. Um, it's really interesting because every time you build a new feature, you're building it in Gitpod on top of Gitpod. And um, a couple of things to clarify. Um, Gitpod is one, a company. Two, it's also an open source project. So if you go to github slash gitpod.io, you'll find our, um, all the source code for Gitpod right there. Anyway, so part of the day-to-day -day work and something I'm going to be showing you is this extension. Now we've got extensions for Firefox and Chrome and what it does is adds a little button and that little button in GitHub allows you to start up uh, Gitpod and actually start up and start doing your development. But it's not actually needed. Like you can actually do development by just going to Gitpod.io and then put a hashtag the uh, the URL of the repository or the pull request that you're going to be doing. All right, so when the extension is installed, you'll get a nice little button up there in the top right hand corner, and that allows you from any um, repository on GitHub or GitLab um, to create an instance. So in this case, I'm going to load up um, Gitpod as it is in main and it's going to create uh, a VS Code instance. And this instance is backed with 64 gigs of memory and 16 vCPUs. So it's really fast. So no matter where I'm doing development and no matter what device I'm on, it's always fast. All right, so something I want to point out there is Gitpod invented this notion of what's called pre-builds. Pre-builds pre-compile your environment. So instead of waiting for an NPM install to occur or compiling a bunch of C dependencies, it's all done. So just clicking on a button for either a pull request or for the main source code, it's actually being pre-compiled. That way you're not waiting for the installation to occur. It's really cool. Now, let's have a look at a couple of pull requests. All right, so right at the top there, we have an issue. And this is an issue we have currently, is because we have the main application and the website both sharing the same, uh, essentially the same namespace. So if you go to gitpod.io slash careers, uh, it's going to show a 404 when you, what you should have done is gone to www.gitpod.io. Really annoying. So here we've, we're working on it and we're implementing a redirect. So let's have a look at this work in progress. So uh, we'll click the, um, the Gitpod button and that's going to start up the IDE. And um, now the IDE is running. Um, what it's done is it's cloned down the source code from that particular pull request and that allows me straight away to start working on that environment or to actually review the, the actual code. Just like before, the actual pull request is being pre-compiled so I don't need to wait. I don't need to wait for the compilation. So what I tend to ha do when I'm doing reviewing pull requests is I actually open three or four tabs. Um, and you get a high degree of concurrency because you're not waiting for these tasks that normally take for a long time to do to complete. Now something that's insanely cool here is I'm not having to do git clone Normally, I would have, would have to do git clone on my local computer. Um, and if I'm on a sketchy internet, um, because I'm traveling, um, git clone sometimes can take a very long time or it could time out. But in this case, all I need is a internet connection with low latency 
and low packet loss, uh, and the bandwidth is not the concern. All right, so with Gitpod, everything is built using CI. Um, when we're doing a unit of work, we create it in a branch, and as soon as we create a branch, it actually spins up a Kubernetes cluster um, and with your work. That's completely independent from, uh, from the production, from staging, you have, we have our own development cluster. So let's show you how this, what this looks like. So by default, when you actually push the branch, it'll create the cluster. But let's say some time has gone by and the, the cluster's been torn down because um, of uh, the idle. It's become idle. You can actually rerun the uh, build by running worth run. Currently, only Gitpod employees are able to do this, but we would like to open this up to the community. So Worft is our CI CD system. It's very similar philosophically with Basil build. And it takes about three minutes currently to do a build and deploy. All right, so just let's skip forward a little bit. So the build is completed. And if you go to the top right hand corner of the uh, results, you actually get the URL. And that URL is the that pull request. Like it's a complete standalone installation of Gitpod running at that address. So let's review the pull request. All right, so we got our standalone version of Gitpod. Now remember the, the problem that we're looking to address is uh, if someone's not logged in, um, we want to redirect to say the careers page. All right, and let's just have a look at the logic here. Ah, looks like there's a little bit of a logic error. Um, right now, it only has the Gitpod staging, and right now, we're currently sitting under a uh, Gitpod dev. So let's just test it a little bit and check. And yeah, let's just leave a knit. Let's just, like, just letting the coworkers know that needs, needs improvement. Now pre-builds. Pre-builds are a feature that can be configured by um, installing the application in GitHub or alternatively configuring uh, the webhooks in Bitbucket, GitLab and GitHub. And what happens is as soon as you push to a branch, be that your main branch or a sub-branch for a feature, it will actually kick off, um, Gitpod will actually compile the workspace in the background. And that's the thing that allows hopping between pull requests with no wait. That's where we're getting a lot of the, the time uh, savings. Now, one thing about Gitpod is you might have seen the YAML file there. Um, we want Gitpod to be as close to zero configuration as possible. So don't get too concerned about seeing the YAML references there. Like You can use Gitpod with no configuration. So this repository is noyaml.com. If we look at the source code, you see there is zero YAML for the configuration file and the button to load up Gitpod works perfectly. Um, by default, we ship a workspace and that workspace has common programming, programming languages installed. And um, you have access to sudo, so you can app get install. Um, if you already have a Docker file, then you can actually configure the Docker file and it actually will compile uh, your uh, Docker file and then will overlay the workspace into the Docker file. And that's part of the features of pre-builds. Um, so getting up, and, uh, getting up and running is really simple. That's something really we really want. We want as close to zero configuration as possible with Gitpod. Anyway, thanks for joining. I hope you found this insightful. Um, Building Gitpod with Gitpod is something really special. Um, it, it allows me to do development from anywhere, from any computer, from any device. And um, if you have any questions what it's like to work at Gitpod, we are hiring and um, happy to answer your questions.